The history of wildfire in California is pretty fascinating, and there's some key differences to what fire was like in California before humans got here, when it was Native Americans, when it was Euro-American settlers, to what our fire policy is today, and how that changes the landscape and the environment of California. So before any people were in California, the fire regimes would have changed very little, or they would have changed very slowly. It would have been mostly changing due to changes in geology, like mountains getting taller. You'd have more lightning in higher elevations, so that might change your fire regime to more frequent fires as your mountains get taller. Or it changes with climate as things get warmer, typically they would get drier, and then you would see increases in fire activity. So before humans got here, things changed very slowly. The vegetation would kind of dance with that change in climate or geology, but it was over very long time scales. Now things started to change a lot more quickly once humans got here. So that was around 12,000 years ago. And around this time was when the ice age was retreating from California. And we were already seeing an uptick in fire activity up in the Sierra. The way we know that is from charcoal deposits. I always wondered how we could figure out what kind of fire we had thousands of years ago. But if you think about soil, each layer is on top of the other one. So it almost provides a perfect timeline or just a way to look back in time. So if you see a bit more charcoal showing up, that means you had some big fires around that time. And in Southern California, some of the evidence shows us that they had infrequent but very large fires. And then, as I mentioned, Sierra, as the Ice Age was retreating, started to see an increase in fire frequency. But then the main change that we started to see to our fire regimes was from Native Americans. Now, I think there's a misconception that Native Americans didn't alter their environment at all. They just completely lived with it. And that's, I'd say, half true, because they did alter the California landscape to their advantage. However, they did do it using a tool that was already part of the natural environment. So in that way, they were living with the California environment. And because of that, the changes they made were relatively stable across time. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is the main tool that Native Americans used to alter their environment the most effective tool they had, the most efficient tool they had, the most widely used tool they had was fire. And they would use fire to change the landscape. So how they would do this is maybe burning fuels around their village so there is a protective barrier. Maybe burning out certain plants so that other crops would be promoted, ones that they wanted to eat or that they'd use the materials for. They also used it in things like war, communicating at long distances, and even in hunting game. So they use something that was part of the California environment. We have a Mediterranean climate, which means we get our rain in winter, which means we have hot, dry summers. And if your hottest time of the year is also your driest time of the year, it's a pretty good bet you're going to have some wildfires. Native Americans picked up on that and then figured out how to use it to their advantage. Now, what I think is most interesting about this time is it's estimated that 4 million acres to 13, 4.4 million acres to 13 million acres burned annually in California during this time. And this is due to lightning fires or lightning ignitions, but then also the fires that Native Americans were using and practicing. Now, to, just to put that into context, I know those are big numbers. It's hard to even think about what is five million acres, what's 13 million acres. I think everybody in California remembers 2020. That's the worst wildfire year we have in recent history. And that burned 4.3 million acres. So way back in the past, we were burning more than we did in 2020 every single year. So that I think is just a fascinating fact. You think about how bad we viewed 2020 and that was how much area was burning every year and maybe even only like a third of how much was burning every single year. So basic summary of Native Americans is they did alter the landscape, but they did it using a tool that was already part of the landscape. And because of that, 
vegetation and the landscape in general is pretty stable over time. Now things really started to change in the mid 1800s. This is when a lot of Euro American settlers started coming over for the gold rush. And there's a whole different idea on how to alter the landscape to your advantage. Some of the key things they do like mining, uh, livestock, and then what I thought was the most interesting was in the late 1800s, one of the main impacts we had on the fire regimes in California was actually through sheep grazing. The sheep would eat a lot of the kind of lower fuels or the fuels right on the ground. The, the exact word's not coming to me, what you call that. But it's grazing. And what that did was it made the fuels a lot less continuous in the forests. And it's usually those continuous for fuels that will carry fire long distances. So when you remove those fuels, fire becomes a lot less frequent. So actually we were altering the California landscape through sheep grazing, because if you don't have as much frequent fires, that allows the trees to go grow bigger, and then it can maybe even promote some species over others. So that's one era. And then we see another area era of fire in California happen in the early 1900s to the mid 1900s. This is viewed as the peak of fire suppression in California. And this happened for two main reasons. So at this time, the United States was under rapid industrialization and we wanted to extract a lot of resources from wildland areas. And we wanted to protect those resources. And the way we thought to protect the forest was through fire suppression. This was an idea that we got from Europe and maybe this idea worked in Europe where you have a maybe a different climate than what you have in California, but it doesn't really work in California because fire is a part of the landscape and the ecosystem, whether you want it to be or not. So if you don't allow fire to happen, the fuels accumulate and then you end up having a massive fire in the future. Now that was one reason we wanted to extract resources and we viewed fire suppression as the way to protect those resources. But we also had a pretty horrific year in 1910 in the Western United States. 78 firefighters were killed and then over 3 million acres of national forest burned down. And that really kicked us into gear for suppress fire at all costs. And then that really continued until about World War II. And around this time we had that war mentality so then we applied that to wildfire. It was the war against fire. And one of the information campaigns we had to promote that was actually Smokey the Bear popped up around this time. Only you can prevent wildfires. Now, after this, so post-World War II, then we started to learn a bit more about the science and kind of nuances of wildfire in California. We started to study it a lot more. We had much better technology. Started to figure out how wildfire interacts with meteorology. Started to figure out how it interacts with the vegetation and the environment. It was the birth of fire ecology. And once we understood that, we realized that, oh, fire is actually a natural part of the California ecosystem. And if we want a healthy environment, we actually have to introduce fire back into the landscape. So three main ways that people today kind of interact with fire in California. One, we have a lot of people moving into the wildland urban interface. This creates more ignitions because about 90% of wildfires are started by people. So with more people moving into wildfire areas, you're going to have more fire starting. But then at the same time, our technology has never been better. We have planes, infrared imagery, satellites, engines, all all kinds of different things. We have AI able to spot wildfires at a distance and then call 911 before anybody else even knows the fire is happening. So we have a lot of technology these days, but then we're also starting to bring back some of the old technology like prescribed burning, which is able to clear out some of the fuels so that we don't have extreme wildfires. So the basic summary there is that our knowledge of wildfire has increased over time. But wildfire is still a very complex problem in California. And if we want to solve a complex problem, we need a complex solution. And for that, we need to increase our understanding even more. 
that's what I'm doing as I'm reading this textbook and then trying to communicate it back to you. So if you want to learn more about wildfire, you can join me on this journey. And thanks for watching.